Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to explain why read-only collections in C-Sharp might not work the way you think they do. And this video is effectively a follow-up to my previous video talking about frozen collections in C-Sharp that are being added in .NET 8 and many of the comments in that video were saying that why are they adding this? We had immutable collections for a long time, those read-only collections that I've been using for years. And that tells me that many people don't understand how read-only collections work and how you can abuse them in tons of ways. So I'm going to cover and explain all that in this video. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell, and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. Now before that, just a very quick reminder that I'm still running my two-day in-person workshop from Zero to Hero Effective Testing in C-Shop in a bunch of conferences this year. For now, the confirmed ones are NDC London, .NET Days in Romania, NDC Oslo, and NDC Porto, with NDC Copenhagen to be announced, and a few others. In those two days, I'm taking you from the basics of unit testing and into some more advanced stuff, and then to mutation testing, and later we're touching integration testing, some pretty advanced stuff there as well, and then we're ending it all off with performance testing. So if you want to spend a couple of days with me learning all that goodness, speak with your manager and see if you can make the trip. And NDC was kind enough to give me a ticket to give away to any of you, so check the link in the description to see how you can win a free ticket to any NDC. All right, so let me show you what I have here. I have a similar console application here, but this console application is using .NET 8. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to compare what we're going to see now with the upcoming Frozen collections as well later. And in my program.cs, I'm going to show you what the main idea is for those read-only collections. So consider three data structures, a list, a hash set, and a dictionary. Now, all of them are mutable. I can go here and say list.add5 or um, set.add4, and they will be added. I can go and say dictionary.add um, four comma string four, and all of these will mutate this dictionary. But it's not uncommon that you might not want that to be the case. You might want to have a data structure that you give to someone using the code and they can't add or remove data out of that. An example will be here where I have a classroom class and only the add student and remove student methods should know how to add or remove students to this list. So this class's ownership of this private field allows it to mutate and customize it in any way they want, but any external users should not be able to directly add or remove data because you might want to do other things like log or collect some metrics or do any fancy thing here alongside just adding them into a list. So what you might do for that is you might expose it either through a computed property or a method. So you might say public list string and say get students and then return the students, or you might say something like this, where you have this computed property. Now, obviously, if you go ahead and you return that here, so if I say classroom equals new classroom, and I go ahead and say classroom.students.add Nick Chapsus, then of course I can do that. Nothing prevents me. So the way many people have tried to solve this problem is by instead of returning a list here, return an I read only list. And nothing really changes here because of the implicit conversion of the list to I read only. But the moment I turn this into an I read only list, you can see that I can no longer add something because the add method just doesn't exist. I cannot add, I cannot remove, I cannot do any of that. All I can do is use the guided dot add student method. And that is the argument that many people who watched that Frozen Collections video had. However, there is a big flaw in this approach, and that flaw is that the way this is done here by just converting it to an I read only list, I can still go here and say classroom.student, and I can hard cast this to the backing type, because really, that's what it is. And at that point, I can just add Nick Chapsis over here. So if I just quickly say console.writeline over here, then as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and debug this and I have my classroom and it's empty. And as you can see, my students are empty. And if I step over this, then I have my student added without having to go through the add student method. That's because the backing type is still that list. I'm just covering it up with an interface that doesn't have those types. So if you're doing this, don't, because in that way, all you're doing is you're having a view over a full mutable type. So it's not truly mutable. Anyone can go ahead and change it at any point. Now, this actually goes quite a bit deeper. So let's take a closer look. I'm going to remove all the classroom stuff from here and I'm going to use the list, the set, and the dictionary. Now, first, let's focus on the four main interfaces. Those are 
I read only list, which we just saw. I read only set. I read only collection, which the collection can be a list or it can be a set. And then I read only dictionary. So all of these at this point can be implicitly converted to that interface and used. And if I go ahead and try to change anything, I can't. Even if I select, for example, the first item, I just cannot set it, even if the setter is locked out. However, you need to understand that even though you use a read-only instance of that mutable type, if that backing mutable type changes at any point, then as you will see over here, we have three items, I add one. Not only does the backing type change to have this new one, but that interface representing it also changes. And this is also true if you try to use the as read-only extension method, because as methods are actually just casting something while the two extension methods actually reallocated. So I have three items here. If I go ahead and I step over this, I have four items, even though I use the as read only. It doesn't detach it from that original type. It just casts it. And it actually goes a bit deeper. It doesn't quite just cast it. In fact, let's see what it's doing. It's creating a new read only collection of this backing type. So effectively, it's the same thing as the I read only collection and passing down that list. The first thing to clear out, just because something is I read only anything, doesn't mean it's mutable. The backing type can still change. However, the benefit of this approach where you're wrapping it into a read only collection or a read only dictionary, because now in .NET 7, we also had the as read only dictionary extension method, which is super, super helpful. Then if you do that, you're actually preventing people from trying to cast it back to the original type and have it have that missing method. Because now if we try to do this and I go ahead and I try to debug it and I try to cast it back to the list that it originally was, I'm going to get an exception because it's no longer a list. It is actually a read only collection, which wraps the list. So this can actually fix the mutation potential that the consumer of this API has. What you should take out of this thing is that if you're trying to do something like this and you want the user to not be able to change it or cast it or anything, you do want to use the as read only extension. Now, a very important thing you need to understand is that those simplicity converted interfaces are super, super cheap to create because obviously here it is just a simple conversion. But if you use as read only or just new read only dictionary or collection, the only thing that's done here is your list or your dictionary is allocated in a backing field. And then all the other methods are just overridden to not allow you to do certain things like remove at or remove or add or insert, making it extremely cheap to create because the main data has already been allocated and you just basically point to it and wrap it. And that is a night and day comparison between something like that or a mutable collection or a frozen collection, which actually take quite a bit of memory and time to allocate everything because it also needs to be structured in a very specific way to be very, very fast to read. To give you a better idea of the performance, I'm gonna bring in some benchmarks. So what do I have here? I have quite a lot of stuff. But I have what you'd expect, for example, a list, a dictionary, and a hash set. Then all my I read only interfaces, one of them is here twice. One will represent a set and the other one will represent a list. And then I have a dictionary and a collection over here. And then I also have the brand new frozen set and frozen dictionary. So we're going to have a very nice and clear comparison between everything. I don't have the immutable collections because this will take forever to run and I don't really compare them, but I did test them in that other frozen collections video. So I highly recommend you check that out if you want to know how they compare. And what I'm setting up here is I'm deterministically creating a thousand items. I'm getting a middle point and then I'm setting up all the different collections. And at this point in the RO collection, I'm also detaching it by reallocating and setting it as read only to get a better understanding on everything. And then I have some initialization tests between our read only collection, read only collection and frozen set. Then I'm checking all the collection contains methods or the dictionary contains keys methods and then all the dictionary get methods. So I'm covering as much as I can. I'm going to go ahead here and say return and I'm just going to do a benchmark runner dot run and select the benchmarks over here and then simply release mode and run it and see what we get back. All right, so results are back and let's see what we have here. So 
as you can see over here, creating an iRead-only collection, which is just an implicit conversion, or even using the asRead-only list, which will only allocate that wrapper class, is extremely, extremely fast and memory efficient. While something like a frozen collection or an immutable collection will actually take quite some time to be allocated and take some memory as well, because it needs to be very smart with how it's allocated initially, because it can never change again as opposed to any of the read-only collections, which can change. Of course, in the contains method, you can see the benefit of using something like a frozen set because it is by far the fastest than anything else. Of course, you can see differences in things like read-only set because sets which are backed by hash sets are optimized for constant time lookups while lists are not. So we see the gradation that we expect. And then you see the contains key and the get value again. Frozen collections are the fastest compared to any of the other collections. They're optimized to be the fastest once they have been allocated and maintained throughout the application's lifetime. So as you can see, working with read-only collections is very, very cheap, but you have to understand that just a facade, there's just a wrapper around the real data, which is still mutable. So if you want truly immutable data, you want to look into frozen collections that are coming or immutable collections that are a bit trickier because they are actually backed by AVL trees and AVL trees work a bit differently. They are all log of N in speed on the get, add and remove operations. So the bottom line is if you want to keep using read-only collections, and I do believe that there is a room for them in your code base, you have to understand and be very careful. Always use the as read-only when you can. In my experience, this will fix most of your problems because people can't hard cast anything and try to mutate things that they should not. So don't simply just return the item with the interface, but be aware that their backing data can change. So if anyone accesses that backing data with fancy unsafe ways or reflection, then your read-only representation is just a view and it can change at any point. But what do you think? Have you been using read-only collections and were you aware of all those things? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making it just possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe, if you want to like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.